Okay, AP Calculus AB, Fundamental Theorem of Calculus. We want to talk today about absolute value functions. I'm not sure what that's supposed to say. I think it's supposed to say functions. And we went through all this stuff using this Riemann sum, and we figured out we can get to here. So this is where I want to start from today without proving much of it. But what I wanted to look at was this. What happens if you have an absolute value function? For example, what if you were interested in this function? What if you were interested in x squared, the absolute value of x squared minus 4 dx from 0 to 3? And how would we break that out? Well, first thing I would definitely do is take a look at that function. And I think it looks a little bit like this, doesn't it? <coughs> Just the, all I'm looking at is the inside function right now. And I'm looking at this, and I know, I believe it has zeros at x, right? I think it factors out like that, doesn't it? So I think that there's a zero here, and then there's a zero here. And I'm pretty sure that the function looks like, like this over here, doesn't it? Like that. And like that. Now, if I was just looking at this inside part of the function, then I'd say, well, you know what? I think it does this, too. And I think it does this. Doesn't it? Well, here's the problem, that this is absolute value. So this part that we're anticipating here actually doesn't show up like that at all, because absolute value is going to be positive. So what happens is we get this thing that looks like this, right? And if you could imagine that this was a door knocker, that if I could grab this, and if these were just hinges, if you don't mind, if these were hinges right here and here, if I could grab this thing right here and just pull it straight up to here, then we'd get this function. So this is what our function looks like. So I guess now what I want to talk about is this. What if I'm interested in this function? I don't know. What if I'm interested in this function from what well, we said 0 to 3? So what does that area look like? And that area right, looks like this, doesn't it? That area would look like this, maybe from 0 right to here. And maybe 3 is out here somewhere, right? So this is where it gets real confusing to me. I guess the first thing I'd start by asking is, what is this point? What is this location right here? And that location right there is positive 2, isn't it? x equals 2 here. So how, I guess my question is now is, how do we get this area here? First, we have to figure out this, and then we're going to go back and get this part. So this is what I'm suggesting to you, that the first thing we're going to do is, is we're going to take the area from 0 to 2, right, of the opposite of x squared minus 4. One thing I know is if, I take, if this was negative 4 right here and I pull this up, this is positive 4 right here, isn't it? This was a, this was a, this was a minimum parabola, so it was, a positive, it was positive x squared. This is negative x squared, isn't it? So have some of that, right? I want the opposite of this because... We're taking the absolute value plus want the area from 2 to 3 of x squared minus 4. And I can hear you. Why aren't you writing dx? So there are my dx's. All right? So we're just going to start to integrate now. So I'm going to go ahead and integrate, and then I'm going to try to be really careful to use the fundamental theorem of calculus correctly here. So one thing I'm going to do with this is I'm going to just going to say, look, this is negative and this is positive now I just multiplied that through is that all right so I'm going to go ahead and integrate and the integral of this is third over 3 right plus 4x right as evaluate I said I'm going to evaluate it from 0 to 2 from 0 to 2 because I'm going to use the fundamental theorem of calculus and remember that's f of b minus f of a so this is a and b here Plus, I need this area here, right? This right here is going to give me this area. Plus, I need this other area, and I need the area of... I'm going to integrate this, so it gives me x cubed over 3 minus 4x, doesn't it? As evaluated from 2 to 3. And now I'm going to go ahead and start using the fundamental theorem of calculus here. And when I do that, we get... All right, we're going to get, I guess we'll do 2 
will give us negative 8 over 3 plus 8. Isn't that right? And f of 0 is that. f of 0, right? f of 0 is 0, right? Plus, now we'll take 3, which is will give us 9 minus 12. I'm just taking f of 3 right now, right? Minus f of 2, which is 8 thirds minus 8, isn't it? I'm going to go back now, and this just turns into a bunch of crap work, um, but necessary. And if you do all this work out, you're going to get 24 thirds. And I'm not going to waste your time by doing all this work. But what I do want to make certain is that when you're evaluating this, 0 to 2, you're using, right? Because this is a mistake I, I made a bunch of times yesterday. When you're evaluating from 0 to 2, you use this. When you're evaluating, <coughs> excuse me, from 2 to 3, you're using this portion right here. And it's a huge difference. And also remember that you had to use the fundamental theorem of calculus twice here, didn't you? Okay, you guys, I hope this was really helpful. And um, if you haven't already subscribed, please do. Come back.